All right, fresh time for day three of World War II. And today we're gonna to talk about how the war began. So basically the period before uh, the US gets involved in 1941. All right, so we talked about how Hitler had uh, taken power. He had started throwing people into concentration camps and eventually the extermination camps. Um, he's also going to defy the Treaty of Versailles. Within a year after taking power, he's going to start rearming Germany. Then in 1935, he announces that the Treaty of Versailles no longer applies. The next year, he is going to send his troops into this area in pink called the Rhineland, okay? It was a demilitarized zone set up after World War I to ensure that um, France and Germany did not have guns pointed at each other. So it's basically an area where no weapons could be used. Uh, Hitler is going to invade it. The French basically say, you shouldn't do that, and that's it. No one responds. They're going to give in. And so actually for the next three years, the other nations are going to appease Hitler. They're going to give in to avoid the possibility of war. And Hitler's going to exploit that because he knows they don't want war and he's willing to push them to the edge. So two years after the Rhineland, uh, next Hitler is going to move in here, right here in purple, into Austria. Okay, So Austria, um, German-speaking country, uh, they actually tried to make them part of Germany after World War I, but the Versailles Treaty would not allow it. Um, Hitler went to the Prime Minister, uh, von Schuschnigg, and said, we think you should be part of Germany, and the majority of your people want to be part of Germany, so it needs to happen. And von Schuschnigg said, well, since we're a democracy, we're going to vote on it. So he said, we'll have a vote. And the day before the vote was to take place, Hitler rolled his tanks across the border, and the Austrian army stood down. They didn't try to attack. And it was called the Anschluss, which means the uh, union between Germany and Austria. A few months later, Hitler is going to again go back in the same area. Right here in this yellowish color is an area called the Sudetenland, OK? This was part of Czechoslovakia, which was a nation that had been created after World War I. But the Sudetenland was German-speaking, had a lot of uh, coal mines and uh, steel plants and a lot of infrastructure, and that's why the Czechs wanted it. So Hitler goes to the Czech Republic, or the Czechoslovakia, still Czechoslovakia at that time, and says, we want the Sudetenland handed over. And the Czechs said, no. <laughs> Basically, without, you know, in, in, in clean words, no. And so now um, Hitler threatens war. He mobilizes his forces to the border. The British, though, are going to step in and ask to have a meeting in Munich, okay? So in September 1938, there is a conference in Munich between the British and the Germans. The Czechs were not allowed to come. Even though it involved their territory, they were not allowed to be there. And so at that meeting, uh, they gave in, and they gave Hitler uh, the Sudetenland, the little areas in yellow, uh, just as he wanted. Uh, but they also extracted a promise quote unquote, that he would, you know, make no more further territorial acquisitions. He was done. Six months later, he invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia and occupied it. You can't see the eastern part because of the, the key there, but he's going to occupy the rest of Czechoslovakia. Again, nothing was done. Well, a few months after that, um, late 18, 1938, early 1939, he is going to approach the Polish, okay? So this is Poland right here in gray. And as you can see, Germany's in red and red. There's that little section right there called the Polish Corridor. There was a key city there called Danzig, and Hitler wanted it. He demanded that the Poles turn it over. He said, this is ours. Poles said, no, you're not going to cut off our only access to the sea. Now, this time, the British and the French realize that Hitler is not going to back down. He has continued to make territorial acquisitions. So they tell him to back down. They said, We've, we're going to back up the Polish. So for about six months, Hitler prepared for war. And then right before it happens, he is going to go to the Soviets, who uh, control this country here in, that's off the map in yellow. Uh, he tells them, he says, we're going to invade Poland, and we only want the eastern part, you can, or the western part. You can have the eastern part. In other words, don't mess with us. And the Soviets are like, okay. So they agreed to divide Poland between them. So on September 1st, 1939, Poland is going to be invaded by the Nazis, and World War II will begin. Now, the Nazis are using a new tactic called Blitzkrieg, which means lightning war, and it basically involves the use of these planes, which were called the Stuka. They were a dive bomber, uh, and I'll just show you here. They, they would basically go up into, a, into an arc, and then as they dropped like this, they would drop their bombs, and they also had a little part up here uh, that whistled, and so it scared the crap out of you. That was the idea. It scared you. And so the Blitzkrieg, and then they would combine that with tanks. They called them panzers. 
uh, and the tanks and the uh, bombings, they will overwhelm Poland in less than a month, okay? Britain and France declare war, and we are now in World War II. Now, what's ironic is, after the invasion of Poland, there's no fighting for like six, seven months, okay? And in fact, the people in Britain and France who didn't want war believe that Hitler truly was done, that he was not going to attack anymore, and that they shouldn't have declared war. Well, we now know Hitler was simply preparing for the next fight. And it's not on the map here, but he is going to attack Norway, which is right off the map here, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. He's going to attack all of these countries beginning in March of 1940 and take them all in less than three months, okay? So <clears throat> uh, the big one was in May, France is invaded. It will fall in June. They were completely caught off surpri by surprise. Um, some men were evacuated. Right here we have the evacuation at Dunkirk. They call it the miracle at Dunkirk. These men had been trapped over here on the French coast and they were uh, evacuated by British naval forces and also uh, just British boats. Like people brought their you know yachts out and rescued people. Uh, they rescued 338,000 men, but at that point, Britain was now by itself. So as I put here, British defiance, Britain was alone now against Hitler. Now, the new leader, Winston Churchill, said, we will never surrender, we shall never surrender, we'll fight to the death. And we know that Hitler, uh, beginning in late June, began game planning an invasion of Britain. But he knew that it would not have any chance of success unless he could take out their air force. So he is going to launch the Battle of Britain targeting the RAF, the Royal Air Force, with his Luftwaffe, which was his air force. Um, doesn't go well in the beginning for the British. They lose a lot of planes. Uh, a lot of their bases are bombed. And then in the middle of it, late August, early September, um, Hitler changes his tactics. He decides to start bombing cities like London and Manchester and Birmingham. He starts bombing the cities, um, trying to kill civilians. He really is. He's hoping that by killing civilians, the civilians will convince Churchill to stand down and surrender. Instead, it made them angry at Hitler and made them want to fight even more. So the London Blitz, as it was called, was started in the middle. And because of that, the RAF was able to rally. They rebuilt their planes and they will win the Battle of Britain by October of 1940. Hitler calls off his Luftwaffe and basically tells the British uh, that he is done. <laughs> and uh, he's still going to fight, but he's not going to try to invade them. And so that was really the last chance uh, Britain could fear an invasion. All right. Meanwhile, in America, as you can see, we are, uh, we're not yet two-time World War champs. That will come here. But just to basically show you that in America, things were very different, okay? Um, we were neutral. We had gone to neutrality. We uh, were not happy about the rise of those dictators we talked about. Um, Europe was not paying their war debts because of the Depression. And then this guy right here, Gerald Nye, is going to convene a committee in 1934, which is going to push what we would call today a conspiracy theory. According to Nye, um, the U.S. Uh, was not going to be involved in World War I. They had no interest. And then all of a sudden, after Wilson got reelected, all of a sudden he was determined to go to war and we went to war. And so what Nye believed was that arms dealers, you know, guys like, as I said in class, Tony Stark, uh, went to Wilson and basically said, we need to make money off of selling guns, so go to war. Um, yeah, that's as exciting as that sounds conspiratorially, it's just not logical. And so Nye will investigate for two years. He will question dozens of people. And yes, he finds out that some of the arms dealers did profit from the war, but did they, you know, physically push, or at least, you know, politically push Wilson into war, he couldn't prove that. But it doesn't matter because a lot of people did believe it, and America became more isolationist because of that. Uh, 1935, we have the Neutrality Act. You can't sell arms to a nation at war. And then it's added to in 37 that, you know, you can sell uh, weapons, but it has to be paid in cash, and they have to take it immediately. So cash and carry is what they call that. So, you know, if you buy, uh, you know, 1,200 rifles, then you better have a ship ready to put them on to take them back to Britain. Um, FDR didn't agree with this. Uh, he didn't want to be hamstrung by neutrality. Um, he felt that trade equals peace. And to be honest, he was a fan of the British. He and Churchill, they found out later, were distant, distant cousins, and he had sympathy for the British people, and so he did not want to simply get locked into a policy where America couldn't, couldn't help, okay? Uh, 1937, he will ignore the law 
while dealing with China. China had been invaded again by the Japanese and he was censured for that. He wasn't censured, but he was, he paid a political price because uh, Congress is gonna come back with the Neutrality Act of 1939 in response to his dealings with China, okay? All right, questions. What is appeasement? What, uh, two, what was Hitler's tactic to defeat Poland and France? Three, what was the belief of the Nye Committee? And four, what was FDR's position in the war on Europe?